The following program is brought to you by the Center for Educational Outreach at Baylor College of Medicine. The connection between health and the environment sometimes is clear cut, as in the case of the April 20th oil spill on the Deepwater Horizon rig. We can see the smoke entering the atmosphere, and of course there was the oil spill that followed into the Gulf of Mexico. I'm Nancy Moreno, and today we're going to explore some of the ways in which the environment interacts with our own health and the health of the ecosystems around us. I'm with Baylor College of Medicine and the Center for Educational Outreach. There are many other cases where it seems like the environmental impacts are on a small scale. Take the case of firewood. These women are gathering cooking wood to use in their homes in their stoves. Yet more than two million people a year die from inhaling smoke inside these houses. The particulates and greenhouse gases given off from cook stoves contribute to global warming. And the search for fuel contributes to deforestation, erosion, and the loss of soil fertility. So even though it looks like the outcomes are occurring on a small scale, they actually reach everyone around the globe. When we think of our environment, there are many aspects of our surroundings that affect our health. There's the natural environment, which consists of the air we breathe, the water we drink and use for cooking and bathing, the soil in which we grow our food and on which we have recreational activities, and there's also the chemical, biological, and social features of our environment. We can't forget the built environment, which are our buildings in which we live and work, our roads and transportation systems, the way we use land, agriculture, for example. And then, of course, there's the obvious, the pollution that we cause and the waste that we deposit into the environment. But there's also a social aspect to environment. It consists of the things we eat and the way we uh, live our lives. Do we exercise? Our socioeconomic status has a huge role uh, in the environment that surrounds us. And of course, there are other influences of society. What do our friends do and what do our families do? And the environment interacts with all aspects of a person's life. And the key per part of this is also that each one of us is unique. Depending on our own genetic makeup, the environment influences each one of us in a different way. Environmental health as a discipline is defined by the problems that are faced, and it usually takes an, a population approach to understand a problem. For example, environmental health specialists might notice that a certain percentage of the population is developing a particular illness. This raises a red flag to them, and they go in and investigate and try to find a relationship with a change in the environment. And it could be any aspect of the environment that could cause a health problem. The most obvious example are the chemicals that surround us. Uh, there are more than 70,000 chemicals produced in the United States alone. Any one of these could have a negative health impact. But there are also pests in our home, for example, the dust mites uh, that are, can be found in our bedding and upholstered material, or the dust produced by cockroach parts uh, in many parts of the country. Infectious diseases can be considered an environmental health problem. For example, uh, the uh, diseases that are spread by insects, uh, such as dengue fever or malaria. Radiation can come from natural sources, such as radon in our homes, or from uh, man-made sources. Even noise can be considered a pollutant, and it certainly can have negative health effects. Temperature is similar. For example, rising water temperatures can affect, uh, can affect the health of aquatic ecosystems and have huge impacts not only on those ecosystems, but on the organisms that surround the water. The field of toxicology focuses specifically on poisons. And it's important to remember that anything can be a poison. In fact, Paracelsus, who was a Swiss physician in the 15th century, got it right. He said that all substances are poisons. There is none which is not a poison. The right dose differentiates a poison. So what is a dose? 
A dose is the amount of something that we take in, and it could be eaten, inhaled, or absorbed. And of course, not all adverse health effects are due to large doses or large exposures to a poison. Sometimes they occur as a result of small cumulative doses that occur over long periods of time. Chemicals in the environment, of course, have many health effects. More than 70,000 potentially toxic chemicals are made and dispersed in our world today, and they're part of our modern standard of living. There are many beneficial aspects of the chemicals that we produce and use, but they also can have many negative effects on our health. Chemicals contribute to global atmospheric change. The greenhouse gases that go up into the atmosphere change the heat trapping ability of our atmosphere and lead to higher surface temperatures. Chemicals can contaminate ground and surface water, affecting our drinking water, and also affecting aquatic ecosystems. Chemicals can affect the balance of species and natural cycles and ecosystems. This is important because it can affect the ranges of organisms that carry diseases, such as mosquitoes. Changing ecosystems also affects food production. Some chemicals in the environment mim mimic the hormones in our bodies. Other chemicals cause mutations in genes, and many affect human development and the nervous system. Most diseases related to the environment result from a combination of factors. In fact, almost all of them result from a complex interaction between an individual's personal genetic makeup and environmental agents. Subtle differences in genetic factors call pe cause people to respond differently to the very same environmental exposure. This explains why some people have a relatively low risk of developing a disease as a result of an environmental insult, while others are much more vulnerable. In all cases, it's the dose and timing of the exposures that are important. Sometimes diseases that are linked to the environment may take many years to develop after the time or times of exposure. In addition, lifestyle factors such as diet and exercise and maintaining an appropriate body weight all play important roles in determining whether someone actually becomes sick. Genetics has a key role in environmental health. And we need to think about our, the genetic makeup of each one of us. We all have two copies of every gene. One set of our genes comes from one parent, the other set comes from our other parent. Changes in one or both copies of a particular gene can confer greater or less susceptibility to a toxin in the environment. The environment actually can provide a trigger for some diseases to develop. And in addition, it's usually a combination of genes in the end that determines whether someone will have a negative health effect from an environmental exposure. Age and gender also play a role. Some agents in the environment actually cause changes in our genes. They cause mutations that affect how cells function. Some of these agents are chemicals, or our radiation, and sometimes even our infectious agents that can cause certain kinds of cancers. There's also an important group of studies undergoing way in many places around the world to identify the groups of genes that confer greater risk of certain diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and cancer that are believed to have environmental connections. Some groups are more susceptible to harm from the environment than others. For example, poor communities and those consisting of minority citizens are more likely to be located closer to sources of pollution. In addition, their housing may have more contaminants, such as lead from paints or asthma triggers from insects that are present. People who have 
low e socioeconomic status also frequently have less access to preventive health care and health care in general, which then contributes to their burden of disease. Another group that's particularly at risk from harm from the environment are children. Children take in more air, food, and water per unit of body weight than do adults. So proportionately, they have a much greater exposure to toxins in the environments than would an adult. In addition, children are still developing, so their bodies are more vulnerable in these key developmental stages to the negative effects of pollutants in the environment. And also, children's have many, children have many more years to develop a disease after an exposure, if they have an exposure when they are very young. <clears throat> Surprisingly, our indoor environments are full of toxins. And indoor air pollution is a common environmental health problem. The pollution in our homes can cause asthma. And in fact, asthma affects about 6.2 million children. And it's increasing even though the quality of our outdoor air is actually improving. Some investigators think that modern children's immune systems have not been challenged sufficiently because they live basically in a clean environment. And because of this, they overreact when they're exposed to allergens, such as dust produced by, dust, by cockroaches, for example, in buildings. In general, Allergens and asthma irritants include cigarette smoke, which is an important indoor air pollutant, cockroaches, dust mites, mold, pet dander, which are just flakes of skin, and pollen. Another important environmental health problem is climate change. And sometimes we don't think about the ecosystems around us, particularly the climate of our world, as having significant environmental health effects. Yet climate change affects all aspects of the world around us. It's related to weather changes and extremes. It's changing the composition of species and ecosystems. It has the potential to lead to water scarcity or flooding, it may affect oceans and coastal regions, and even air quality. All of these are related to the potential for disease. Uh, some of the disease concerns related to global warming include greater incidences of food and waterborne illnesses because of flooding or high temperatures. Asthma, allergy, and airway diseases could increase for the same reasons. And because of range expansion, in other words, insects that live in tropical regions expanding northward, for example, into more temperate regions, we could see more and new infectious diseases. In addition, there is great potential for increases in cancers, cardiovascular disease, and neurological diseases such as Parkinson's disease because of heat stress, poor diet, and increased pesticide exposures. Why would we have more pesticides? If there's an increase in the ranges of disease-causing vectors such as mosquitoes, we might even see a pesticide use. So Global atmospheric change affects every aspect of the way we live and could have huge environmental health impacts. Another way in which the environment interacts with human health is by disrupting the endocrine system. The endocrine system produces chemical messengers that regulate many of life's processes, including sexual development, metabolic functions, uh, growth, and the response to stress. Endocrine, endocrine disruptors are found in everyday products, including plastic bottles, metal food cans, detergents, flame retardants, food, toys, cosmetics, and pesticides. Some of these chemicals are so similar to hormones produced by the body that they can occupy the same sites in the body and produce the same responses as hormones that are naturally in our bodies. This can cause a variety of health problems. Um, the most noted of which is the early onset of puberty in girls and other developmental problems. It's also believed to be a contributor to obesity. On BioN Online, we're making teaching materials available for use in a variety of classroom and informal educational settings to help educate about environmental health. If you explore 
BioEd Online, and K8 Science, you'll find lessons and complete units on indoor air quality, non-point source water pollution, global atmospheric change, food nutrition, and food safety. In addition, we're providing professional development and short courses on these topics to help educators learn how to introduce environmental health topics into your classrooms. Supplementary materials for students are also available for downloading. We hope that you'll explore some of the topics related to environmental health and help your students understand that they live as members of our global ecosystem and that their health is intimately connected to their surrounding. Thank you.